Well, hello and welcome to a rather noisy episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So anyway, I know it's been a long time, but I'm going to continue on with the homemade buck converter circuit. So it's pretty much exactly as I left it in the previous video. So in this video, I'm going to add current and voltage regulation. In the last video, I found out how to drive a N-channel MOSFET in the high side. Now, I've had suggestions about using a P-channel MOSFET and things like that, but the thing is, with a P-channel MOSFET, well, I want to operate the circuit eventually on about 30 volts, and, you know, if I do that, just connecting a P-channel MOSFET up to the chip's output. When the MOSFET's off, there's going to be about 30 volts between the gate and the source, and that's just going to fry the things, so it's much better to do it this way. So, let's turn our circuit on. You can see we're not getting much output at the moment, but let's just plug in our bias voltage when I can get to the plug. And now you can see it's working much better, so... We can go up almost to 12 volts. We can if I increase the supply voltage. So running on about 17 and a half volts now. And by adjusting the duty cycle, I can get different voltages out. And I'm measuring the current at the output. And as you notice, as I turn the output up, the current also goes up. Or it should do. I don't exactly know why it isn't. Because I didn't have the meter on the right setting, that's why. But you can see as I turn the current down, I mean as I turn the output voltage down, the current also goes down, and as I turn the output voltage up, the current goes up. Right, so I've got our current sense resistor in. So this is connected between the output ground and the circuit ground. So let's just turn on again. So we're now measuring the voltage across this resistor. And as I turn the output voltage up, you'll notice that the voltage across the resistor is also increasing. And when I turn the output voltage down, the current across this resistor is also starting to go down. I mean, the voltage across that resistor. So that's working as planned. So now what I want to do is actually put in the voltage and current regulation circuit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a reference voltage. So when the current or the voltage crosses that reference voltage, then the chip will adjust itself and do whatever it needs to do. But where are we going to get that reference voltage from? Well, there's good news here because the TL494 actually has that built in. So we can get a constant 5 volts out from pin 14, and that's where we'll get our reference voltage. Right, so this is what I've come up with. And I know it's all kind of all over the place, but this is basically going to be what is going to control the circuit. Now, I wanted to use about 1.2 volts for my voltage feedback voltage reference, and about 150 millivolts for my current feedback voltage reference. Can't exactly get to those particular voltages with the specific resistors I've got, but it's close enough. Okay, so I've got the meter connected to pin 14. Now let's connect it to pin 15, where I want, like, the 150 millivolts. Well, that's pretty close. So, I'm not going to make any changes to that. And for our voltage feedback, voltage reference, we're at about 1.16 volts. So again, that's pretty close to what I want, so I think what we've got to do now is connect in the control potentiometers and see what happens. It's looking good. So we've got a waveform, so our chip is oscillating. 
So these two potentiometers are going to be to adjust the voltage and the current. So this one is going to be to adjust the voltage and this one is going to be to adjust the current. Now all of this over here is disconnected at the moment because I just want to make sure that this part of it works and the hand makes an appearance. So at the moment I've just got this one connected to the positive through a one kilo ohm resistor. So as I turn this up it's going to represent the voltage at the voltage feedback going up and at some point it should there it goes let's bring that back down so there's our voltage feedback working and this one is our current feedback so I've got one side of this connected to the ground the other side of this is connected to the positive through this um, resistor here it's a 33k resistor so this is going to represent the current across the current sense resistor I mean the voltage across the current sense resistor increasing again when we get to a certain point that should there we go so you can see we've got control of our chip there so I think the next thing to do is connect all this up to there, connect these to where they're supposed to go and we'll see if this little circuit works so let's see if this thing works now for now I've just got the um, voltage feedback connected we will do the current feedback in just a little while right, let's just uh, connect this jumper wire in Okay kind of swamping out the camera so I'll just put my hand across it so we can see the voltage on this little meter here so I'm going to turn this down and it should start yeah and we can adjust the voltage although my coil seems to be squealing a little bit that's a little bit worrying is that coming from the coil uh -huh exactly sure why that is. Alright, so anyway, let's see how good the regulation is. So we're at about 7.8 volts out. Let's just unplug the ball. Nah, not too bad. I would say that's working pretty good. Right, so, right, so I've added our current limit now. So, hopefully I'm not covering up the voltage meter, but this bulb is kind of swamping out the camera. So as I turn this down, we should start seeing the voltage going down. It doesn't seem to be doing anything yet. Is that actually going to do anything? Oh, there we go. You can see the voltage is going down this time not because it's limiting the voltage but because it's limiting the current and of course we could put both of these in if we wanted okay so I've stopped my coil from squealing now so what I did was originally the base of this transistor here was connected to this 10k as you can see here but the other end of that 10k was connected to the supply voltage which was just a little bit too much so instead I've connected that to pin 14 which is where the 5 volts comes out and now no more squealing coil so here we are running it on about 15 volts I've got these two bulbs in series so hopefully they won't swamp out the camera so putting about 15 volts in, we're getting about 12 volts out. And the waveform at the base of our high side driver transistor is nice and good. And as I lower the output voltage, you see it's getting a little bit how you're doing there, but still good enough. Uh, 
And as you probably heard, no squeals from the coil. Alright, so, let me just take that out. I'm now going to connect this to the 12 volt supply, or, well, the 15 volt supply, rather. Let's just make sure that's in there. Putting my power supply bypass cap back in. Yeah, I had to change the um, power supply bypass capacitors because I only had 16 volt capacitors and uh, that was going to explode if I put too much voltage in there. I know all too well about that. So what can I say but... whoops. Right, so this is with that resistor connected to the supply voltage. Uh, let's just try to stop that jittering about. Okay. Now, at first it looks alright, we've got a little bit of a meh at the bottom there, but now let's go lower the output voltage. And of course this time it's going to be absolutely fine, isn't it? Might be because of the additional capacitance from the scope, let's just unplug the scope, see if it does it. Okay, it's not going to do it now, is it? That's just typical. Of course, because I'm trying to do this on a video, it's deciding it's actually going to behave. Yep, that's just so typical when you're trying to show something and it doesn't do it. Anyway, let's put our supply voltage up to 30 volts. Now, I did a little test earlier with this on 30 volts and I exploded a capacitor because I didn't realize I had 16 volt capacitors in there. All right, so let's raise it up to 30 volts if we can. There we go, so we're on about 30 volts, and as you can see, our voltage output hasn't shifted. Let's put it back to about 12 volts, or wherever we had it. So you can see, over the range of voltages, that's holding our output voltage pretty good. Anyway, let's go up to 30 volts, which is as much as this little gauge can measure. Alright. Let's see if we can get full 24 volts out. And yes, we can. So we can go from about 3 volts up to about 24. So that is really good. Now it was about that point where my previous capacitor exploded because I couldn't really handle it, but you know, I'm quite impressed with that. So I think the next thing to do is to put this on a prototyping board and well, I think I'll do that in the next video because this is getting rather long, so I'll just leave you to mull over the circuit board, I mean the schematic. So, in the next video, I'm going to come up with a power supply to power the circuit. We're going to put this onto a prototyping board, and I'll have a nice little switch mode regulated current limited power supply. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye. And now, a public service announcement. Sorry. If you're gonna do electronics projects, Make sure you're using capacitors that can handle the voltage. So, I decided to continue on with my buck converter. Powered it up at 30 volts, and something went bang. And this is that right now, as you can see. This capacitor exploded because I was trying to put 30 volts into a 16 volt capacitor, because in my infinite stupidity, 
I've forgotten those were the capacitors that I put in.